This is Drop Tent Media Network. Hey, hold right there. Don't dare skip this. This is an important message. Me and my boy, Albert Davis, we want to tell you about our podcast, Seriously, Dad. Albert, why should they listen? Because it's the best podcast in the world. It's by two comedians who are dads. And you know what we're talking about? Being dads. It's called Seriously, Dad. Check us out on social media at Seriously, Dad Podcast. And anywhere you get your podcast, that's where we're at. We're funny. We got some great guests coming our way. We cover the topics you want to hear. Check us out. The old saying goes, if you don't work, you don't eat. Whatever the new saying for the new generation, you either grind or starve. Established in 2015, Grind to Starve Apparel has become the premier fashion brand for today's hustlers, entrepreneurs, and CEOs in the making. The online store provides groundbreaking styles and innovative designs for today's go-getters, proving that you can grind and look good at the same time. Grinder Starve has several collections to choose from. The new GOS Luxury, Designer, Location Apparel, Rep Your City to the Fullest, Fitness, Barber Edition, Stylist Edition, and Baker's Edition. Go to GOSApparel.com the next time you need a hoodie, polo, G-shirts, bags, all made with the best quality materials. Grinder Starve, the choice is yours. Go to GOSApparel.com. Uh-huh. High IQ Basketball with Brian Isley uh, time, and Raymond Bird. What's going one. on, bro? I'm going to go for like a... And welcome to High IQ Basketball with Brian Isley and Raymond Burr. I'm Brian Isley. That's Raymond Burr. We got super producer Neil, and we're going to get right into it. Uh, The Lakers played the Mavs last night, first game after the Lakers won the inaugural in-season tournament, and looks like it's back to reality. (laughs) Back to reality. (laughs) That's what it looks like. We're under 500 in non-tournament games. Wow. Um, I don't think they they didn't play no defense. I ain't gonna say they didn't play no defense last night. I think Luke is just such a, a very difficult person to guard. Kind of like remember a couple of years ago when Harden had his peak in Houston, where people got to that point where well, I'm gonna defend you with my hands behind you, my, my back. You yeah, know that what I mean? Was a wild time. And it's kind of like that. Like you go watch that game. And I watched the game in its entirety and. You, he was getting easy shots because you were scared that to fa- you were scared he was going to draw a foul, and it, and I was thinking about that when I was driving over here. Like, would Luca be the same in a pickup game? Would he be as as dominant if we were playing pickup? Right, you take the referees out because you know you know you playing pickup, you don't get rewarded for fouls. All you do is check ball up mm-hmm. and try again. You don't get free throws. Mm-hmm. And when he's playing, right, everything is to manipulate the referees. You reach, I'm swinging my arms to draw a foul. You know, mm-hmm. you think about how we grew up playing ball. You, you train in such a way, you reach, I teach, right? You yeah. reach, now you're out of position and I'm, now I'm going by you or yeah. I'm going to get a, or I'm raising up for a jumper. Or, These or guys, if you, you reach, <clears throat> I'm slapping your hand away. Right, These guys are taught to manipulate the referees. I'm going to draw a foul. That's yeah. my whole intent. I'm drawing a foul or I'm making a bucket. He he complains after every, anything that doesn't go his way. If it's a missed shot, a yeah. bad pass, a turnover, anything, anything, is I'm looking at the referees or my teammate was in the wrong place. It makes it, it's, it's not pretty basketball. It's not fun to watch. That shit was not fun to watch. And he's a great player. I've seen him go to work and play at a high. I watch him kill the Clippers. I'm watching him hit game-winning step backs from 30 feet out like the boy. I'm not mm-hmm. questioning can he play because he can play. But last night, the Lakers lost because we're not allowed to guard him. And maybe that changes in the playoffs. And maybe to be different, they allow a different level of physicality, which they typically do. But last night, it was just I ain't, we, we're not allowed to put our hands. We're not even allowed. If I do anything and he just flails his arm, we're blowing the whistle when he's at the line for two. You know what I mean? So he played great. He put up great numbers. But you know, I, I don't take a lot from that game in regards to the Lakers. I think they played good ball. I think that Luka is just a, a weird matchup for anybody. So it's like Harden when he was with Houston. You could do everything right, and he still got 40. So you said it's a bad watch? 
it's a bad. I hated watching Harden play. Hated it. Uh, Harden got like fifteen to twenty free throws a game. Yo, I don't you, think you it's as it? bad. It's not as bad. I agree with you. Do you watch it? Yeah. Tell, you you get what I'm saying though, right? It is referee manipulation at its highest. Mm-hmm. Everything is if it doesn't if it if it's not a made shot. Or I got the assist, I am complaining to the referee. He is the biggest crybaby in, re- in regards to complaining to the refs in the league. A lot of people say it's Braun, and that's because they just don't like Braun. But if you look at Luka game, I'm a Luka fan. I'm a Luka guy. I love Luka's game. But he is, he he cries every trip down. Every trip down. And um that does get that does get annoying. But I don't think I don't. I, it's not like I said. It's not as bad as Harden. Like you said, d- defenders had their hands behind their backs, <laughs> guarding Harden, looking at the refs like, "Yo, I'm not touching this dude. Right? I'm not touching him. Y'all win. We can't do anything with this guy. We can't because Harden. You said Luca is manip- manipulation at his, in his highest form. Nah, that's Harden, and it's by a country mile. <laughs> Houston Harden was. I, <laughs> Boy, I hated those games. It was nothing but a free throw contest. Right. Yeah, Harden was putting up uh, historic numbers scoring wise. Yo, I, is it safe to say that sixty to sixty five percent of those points were at the line? I wouldn't go that far, but I, I would say that when you hooping, right? Yeah, you, know, you all you train, you shoot the basketball. You 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 have an idea of what you need to do to make shots. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you're struggling, so when you struggle, you try to get to the free throw line and get a rhythm. Right. Harden would have games where he shoot the ball horribly, but he would still get his thirty to forty because he was shooting fifteen to twenty free throws. Exactly. So you know, I think his numbers are they show a they, that time where we say Harden was that great offensive weapon, maybe the best offensive weapon. It's not necessarily true because. It's a lot of manipulation in those numbers. It's a lot of oh, I got to the I had terrible shooting numbers. Like yeah. I go, you go back and check his shooting percentage for his career. It's low forties. Right, right, right. Kobe would shoot six for twenty five, and that be it. Maybe he had five or ten attempts at the line, but that six for twenty five would be six for twenty five. He'll probably have 23, 24 points on a bad night. Hard it'll be six for 25 and have 35. I think players today are just trained different. Like I said earlier, like guys are training in a way where if a guy is guarding you, he has his hands here, swipe your arms through. And so you can get to the free throw. Swipe Even the guys you. like in B, which once upon a time, these, your bigs are supposed to be your most physical players, right? And B, I mean, I, I said Luca and Bede is right there with him in regards to being able to manipulate the referees where you're swiping your arms with no anticip you're not trying to make a shot. You're just trying to draw a foul and throwing the ball towards the basket, trying to get to the free throw line. I'm not a fan of that. You know, I grew up in a way where if I did something to get you at a disadvantage, it wasn't to get to the free throw line. It was Ooh, to, to go get a bucket. To score. And if I got fouled, then that was a bonus. That's what it that's what it is. If I got fouled, so be it. Put me at the line, but my intent is to score. Right. And I think today these kids are they're tr- they're training because they're, they're too good at it to not to to it, it's not coincidence. It is we're training in such a way where when a defender does this, you do this to draw a foul. Yeah. The Lakers seem to be a different squad when that cup isn't on the line. <laughs> <laughs> Chill with the cup. Like, do you agree? I, Yo, I think I don't take a lot from yesterday. What are they like nine and ten outside? I think of you the tournament? can't take their record into into play because they were not healthy. I think during cup play, don't get me wrong, some of those games where they weren't healthy as well. So I think that they had their eye on the prize the entire time. But I think later on, especially when it got to the tournament part of it, where it was winner go home, yeah. they started to get healthy. You know, Vandy came back. Roy came back, you know. I mean, they're still waiting for Gabe Vincent, but they started to get some of their main players back, which resulted in them being able to win that thing. I think they're different, man. I mean, A A D did ball out last night. Brian, of course, did his thing, but it's just something, just something missing. I yeah, I, I've been telling you this all year. <laughs> 
I'm tr- what's boy name? D Lo. I'm trading D Lo. And I'm going to go get some firepower. Levine is out there. The road, that whole Bulls roster is on the table. Oh, I also heard the bull from the cab. What's his uh Spider? I heard Mitchell? Spider's on the market. I heard he could be had. The Cavs are struggling. This is not what they envisioned when they made that move to bring him yeah, over. It's not. So I he is on the market. I'm telling you, if I'm this, I mean, you probably ain't got the ammunition to go get him because no. it's going to be a bid. The Knicks want him. It's going to be a bidding war. The Sixers the are going to be in play. Should have been the ones that got him in the first place. I think the Sixers are going to get him. But oh my god, I believe that. Go get a Levine. Wait, wait. Sixers with and B Maxi and Spider. I think they get him. If he's on the market, they got all the ammunition. They got the picks. They got the. Uh, and they got the contracts to piece together to go get him. They can match anything that the Knicks put on the table. I don't think so. The Knicks, Harris and Ubre. <clears throat> it, it would. I don't even know if it has to be Harris. I think because initially I was thinking any move that they made would have to include Harris mm-hmm. to make that hardened trade to the Clippers work. They had to receive money back. So I think Morris is in the last year of contract. I think Morris is probably making somewhere around twenty, and Batum is probably somewhere in the neighborhood of ten. Okay. So they had to match the money up. Clippers are over the uh, salary cap. So the money had to match up. Okay. So the Sixers receive equal value money-wise for Harden. So they got contracts outside of Harris that they could trade to go get another max guy. So they could, in essence, keep Harris and add another quality piece. That's dangerous. But then you got to make it work. Because now Harris is falling back into the role he was with you know, when yeah. they had Harden, and that yeah. wasn't ideal for him. This is more the ideal. You're not going to get this version of him if he add another guy. Nah, you're, gonna, you're not going to get 19 points per game out of Harris if you bring in Spider and keep Maxi and if That's the three. But then, it, then it's like, to the four. how does it work? Because Spider's on the ball. I'm a closer. Maxi's, t- I mean, Maxie it's a lot of things. play off the ball. Maxi has proven Spider he can play, can play off, play the, off ball. the ball. They can both play off the ball, but the dynamic of what that looks like, the dynamic of end of the game, who's running that pick and roll with Embiid? It's been Maxi, And maxie has been benefiting from being able to get downhill, getting floaters and all mm-hmm. that stuff. Now you're going to put him off the ball? Not this to say is, he can't. Yeah, this is this is, this is is where last week what Keith, Keith Pompey said, he said, do you make a change just for the sake of making a change and adding more firepower? Because there's a chemistry aspect involved here too. So uh, Mitchell has been used to being the man in Utah and in, in Cleveland. You go over to Philly, it's a different role. I mean, I, I make the move because you, if you add in a player of that caliber, Spider's an all-star caliber player. He's an all-league caliber yeah. player. You add that, regardless of how it ends right now, it raises the bar on what your expectations are for this mm-hmm. year. But I think it buys you time with Embiid. Even if you are to come up short, say you are, you you get to the playoffs and you lose in the second round and people blame it on, well, we need a little bit more time. And B's going to give you that. Yeah. Because we got Spider and we got Maxi. Now we got a training camp versus I think if you sit, stand pat, go into the playoffs and you lose into the second round, most people would consider that to be a win, right? You know yes. what I mean? They're, they're not the same expectations as this be the last only time. year. But is that okay with Embiid? Is Embiid going to walk away from this year like, yeah, we lost in the second round. I want to win a championship. I want to win a I chip. Think, I think if we know, we're not in the Sixers organization. If we know it's a win, given the circumstances, he has to know that too. He I mean, he might be okay. I mean, But you also know players make decisions based upon the optics, right? All right, I'm playing nice. Now we didn't come, we came up short again. Now, all right, it's okay for me to say I went out. Ain't nobody going to chop my head off. You know, y'all got rid of mm-hmm. Harden. I played it out. It didn't work out. I want to get traded. You don't get killed the same. Quarter one is done. So rap. It's he, 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 he had wild time of possession in that quarter. So. <laughs> running the he, buck, he, he, <laughs> the ball, like running the buck. Back here, it looks like it's going to be like Brian. The backfield, big. Best <laughs> offensive line. <laughs> Brian 31, Ray 42.
Okay. Yeah, that sounds that sounds about so right. High score first quarter, baby. Mm-hmm. Sounds about right. We're headed in a quarter two and <laughs> in the in the second half of the doubleheader last night, the Phoenix Suns played the Golden State Warriors and Draymond Draymond. Smack the shit out of him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yo, my man, yo, he wilding, man. He he is wild. I don't think it was on purpose, for real. I don't think I think I do. I I heard him after the game, and he said, "I'm apologizing because yes, I was trying to sell the foul, but I didn't mean to smack the shit out of ball." And I I tr- I believe that I, they ain't got no history. I think he truly was not trying to smack the <laughs> shit out of him. They don't have a history. Him. Draymond has a history. And that's why we talking because he has a history. I don't think he did that shit on purpose. For I real. Think, I think he did. Anytime, listen, and look, look <clears throat> he's, sp- okay, you're trying to sell a call. We've all seen cats try to, players try to sell a call. Out of the thousands of times we see somebody flail their arms trying to <laughs> sell a call, how many times have you seen that ended up with somebody getting punched in the face? I don't think he did it on purpose. And, uh, it's it, it, oh, it's fucked up. It happened. And if I was Nurkish, I, I don't know if my response would have been on the sideline. I probably had to get at you. Okay, then. You would have had to explain yourself. All right, then. With an apology so on if the it's spot. Like, so if it's but, like that, then, I, yo. You he, think he gets suspended? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, man. Lee's wild crazy. He, yeah. he, he served his penalty. Not he got only, ejected. That's not enough. Only, not only is he getting suspended, it's going to be more than the suspension he just came back from. Wow. I that's, guarantee uh, it. That's crazy. If they suspend him for anything more than what just took, even comparable to the choking thing, it's crazy. Like, I don't think he ain't there. He they, ain't, that they was t- not. They tired of his shit. They might be, but this is not comparable it's to that not, situation. It's not. It's not. It's not, but it's 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 Draymond be a Draymond, and bro, you just came back from a five game suspension, you dickhead. <laughs> we gonna have to suspend you more and suspend you. Take you getting ten games. Wow, if he get ten games for that, that's crazy. Um, it's I, it's not because of the incident. It's because of <laughs> it's just a culmination of all the incidents. Listen like we that. still, they yo, this uh, this how bad it is for Draymond. They was talking about that to, today on on the show on the shows on TV and stuff. They was talking about what Draymond did last night, but the conversation, all the conversations that I saw, all went back to him punching Jordan Poole in the face. Man, it all goes that. back to that. Okay, so so you got a track record, you got a history to the point where we talking about stuff that you did last year. Listen, man. And then they showed the video footage of him kicking Steven Adams in the nuts. They showed him getting that brawn, talking that brawn all crazy. They was about yo, to fight. Yo, man, ain't nothing wrong with no competition. Yo, I man, we need a little bit more of this in the league. League is getting super soft. You give this boy 10 we, games for that, that's crazy. We we need Zangief clotheslines in the league. Right. Listen, man, he was protecting his teammate last night. I don't think he did that intentionally. Some of the stuff he do does do. It's a little nutty. Yo, he was I'll out of pocket, that. bro. I don't think he was out of pocket. Like, he was trying to sell a foul. So he was trying to sell a foul, but dude's grabbing on me. I'm ripping loose. When to have show you, seen... you to show you that he is grabbing me. I'm trying to rip loose and I'm flailing okay, my arms like that's, everybody. That's... And B flails his arms that's all fair. the time. And so if B... he intentionally hit somebody, and it would it, it wouldn't be crazy if he did. And then he... B they never rush and sickle nobody either. <laughs> Flailing his arm, trying to sell a call. That's why I'm. That's why I'm trying. When have we seen that happen? I don't think he to where somebody ten games. gets stretched. I think he got what he deserved yesterday. A one game, he got suspended. He got ejected from the game. Mm-hmm. Maybe you throw. Maybe, maybe you throw a game on top of it. But ten games is crazy. Uh, Nurkic, he he said, I don't know. What's, <laughs> I don't what's know what's with wrong it, right? with the ball. <laughs> Something wrong with him. I'm just glad he ain't choked me. <laughs> I heard I saw one of our boys remote Mo Mo said he won bath salts. <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, I, I think something wrong with Draymond. I, man. I, I, I don't think that Dr- Draymond is an ultimate competitor. He he do a lot of weird shit during the season, but when the lights come on and you in the tough playoff series, you want him on your side. 
I agree 100%. One and, I also, and I'm also one of the advocates to have him in the Hall of Fame. He is, that's, he don't need no advocate. He's certified oh, he, uh, first ballot Hall of Fame. I agree 100%. But there's people that's going to disagree. And it's because Pink got the numbers. in part says he doesn't have the numbers and in part because of his behavior. This man, they this make a lot baseball. of this stuff personal, bro. The same baseball. There was, there was, there. I remember 2016, um, Allen Iverson, first ballot Hall of Famer. There were questions of whether he was going to be first ballot based on his reputation and how people didn't like him personally. We're giving the media too much power. It's like in baseball. They give the me, oh, because I don't, I wasn't taking interviews and I wasn't, I, I wasn't the best with the reporters after the game or whatever the case may be. You're going to hold me out of the hole. I got the numbers. A lot of the but baseball because stuff. I ain't got the, I ain't got great relationships with you guys. Come on, that sounds crazy. A lot of the baseball stuff is uh, steroid. It's steroid, but some of it is you know, these guys don't be getting voted in because they don't get the votes because I ain't got relationships with you guys. That's like us, right? Right? We 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 sitting here. We 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 giving information about our opinions about sports, right? Mm -hmm. What if we what if we got Hall of Fame votes, right? We we voting on who getting in the hall, who not getting in the hall. Yeah. Well, you know. We hit so we hit Maxi up to you know interview for the show and he was acting funny on us. Yeah, we was acting Hollywood. So when his turn come around, I'm not voting for him first time go around because because corny. of that. And they do and they do it. They do it because after the game, he I asked him to could he sign my my son this jersey so I can give it to my son for his birthday. And he said, Nah, that's corny. But a lot of people feel that way about Draymond. And Draymond has coined the phrase new media. That's his. That's his. New media, and I'm fine. We are part of new media. Facts. <laughs> and I'm Thank fine. You. I'm a fine with. I'm fine with all. He is a Hall of Famer. He ain't gonna have Hall of Fame numbers, but his contribution to winning. You no, know, you been, know the old guard. They hate this. They hate. They hate the new media. And and we're gonna get into to, that. It's, it's here, here to stay. stay. It's forever. It's all in the way. It's it's, it's all in the way. Percent in the way. We in the way. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's all in the way. We definitely in the way. <laughs> no, no journalism degrees in, in this room, bro. <laughs> but we feel as though we have the ability to speak on the game at a high level. Right. So and that's I what concur. it is. Yeah. Draymond. He is second, I believe, second all time. And ejections. Behind she. Behind she. <laughs> Rashid was on Gill's Arena claiming Draymond as a 04 Pistons disciple. <laughs> I mean, it makes so much sense now that I've heard that story. That Draymond was, was in she, a locker though. room. They was good guys. It was only she that was on some dickhead shit. <laughs> It was only she. <laughs> Chauncey ain't moved like that. Ben was quiet. They was goons. They was all go every they single was all, one of them. They had a locker room full of dogs, but none of them was she. You know what's wild? I think that's the only championship team where the starting lineup were all journeymen. All on multiple teams before they landed in Detroit. Where Chauncey start? Chauncey started in Boston. Oh, it is in Boston. Billups was in Washington. Not Billups, but uh, Rip. Rip. Rip was in Washington. She was in Portland. Well, everybody knew what she was. Everybody knew what she was. She yeah, could yeah, have yeah. been top five power forward ever if he if if that's what he was on. That yeah, agree. She was was KG good. Huh. She was skill wise. KG good. He was he was right there. Especially offensively. And he had more range. Had more range. He could step out and knock the, down the three. But yeah, man, it's just a collection of dogs. They were good, though. They had a, I mean, they only got one chip out of it, but they were, they had a, what, six year run, all Eastern Conference finals minimal. Facts. Got to two finals. They got to two finals, right? Two finals in a row. 05 was game seven. They went seven games with, with the Spurs. Spurs, yeah. Yeah. And could have and, and, and could have won it all, and you know, big shot Bob did that inbounds play where he made the pass, stepped in, and knocked down the three. Right, I think she was the one that left him. That's the series right there, essentially. But yeah, uh, she is 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 claiming 
Draymond. Like Draymond's whole essence is that of the 04 Pistons. I don't. I mean, I guess it was in a lot. I mean, I he got he got it in him. I mean, it makes sense because he would have fit perfectly on that when on that squad. But uh, I ain't got no problem with Dre's how he move on a basketball court. Like you know I mean, you you need them type dudes. You trying to win a championship? You need a Draymond on the roster. You need a Pat Bev. You need them type dudes on the you team. You need a Pat Bev. <laughs> yeah, them, ton, them them kind of dudes is kind of they they propel you to chips. You need you need a you need a Draymond. You need a a, a Bruce Bowen. You need it. It it goes back as far for me because I started watching basketball really young. It goes. Michael Cooper was one of those guys. Coop could hoop though. Coop could was better. Hoop. Coop was better than them dudes. <laughs> but Coop I'm talking about buckets. like a dog locked down defensively. I'm going to take the best player. I'm going to set the tone defensively for this running gun Lakers squad who wouldn't be have a de- defensive identity otherwise. Right. Right. That's why I'm saying like Coop was like Draymond is 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 of that mold uh, or that mold. Fact, yo, off topic, right? I'm just thinking this that Pistons team we named with all the dogs, Ben and all them boys. Yeah, right? aren't they on par with? But we know we give Boston so much love with KG and all that, right? And mm-hmm. I know we just made the KG she comparison, right? Boston, they be both got one chip, love. two finals appearances, right? Boston be and towards <laughs> the end of Detroit's run, they were battling Boston. Were they? Yeah. KG's Boston? KG's Boston. They yeah. were at the I mean, the, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't, it was, it was, that was last, that was, uh when they met, that was Chauncey's last year, I believe, in that Detroit the before they shipped him to AI? Denver and got uh, AI. But yeah, I mean, I think their runs are very and comparable. Then, and then Chauncey extended his conference finals run because he went to Denver and went to the Western Conference Finals. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, their runs are very. I think yeah, the choice was longer in was. regards to you know success overall. But one one chip, two finals appearances. Mm-hmm. Second finals appearance was a game seven loss for both of them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They did. But we talk about the the Celtics more because the Celtics are more visible now. You got right. KG still out here. You got Paul Pierce. You got Perk over at ESPN. So that's still more visible. Those those. Detroit squads, you don't see too much of them. Right, right. Chauncey is coaching up in Portland. You don't see Rip. Chauncey is coaching. And you don't see Chauncey. They <laughs> ass. <laughs> uh, that brings us to halftime. We will be right back after a word from our sponsors. Uh, this is halftime, and halftime is sponsored by If You Know, You Know. Trivia game. This is a trivia game uh, created by a great friend of mine and uh, friend to the show, Saquon Gillette. Uh, if you know, you know, is a 90s to 2020s hip hop and RB trivia game. It's created by Saquon Gillette, as I said, a Star Corner production, Star Corner Games. And it's the game you never knew you needed. Guaranteed to have you singing, dancing, laughing, and reminiscing. You'll probably learn something too. In the most fun way ever is for ages 13 and up. Because you know with hip hop we have explicit <laughs> we have explicit lyrics. But yeah, if you know, you know trivia game. Uh get it on Amazon and wherever uh games are sold. That is our halftime sponsor. And we are back. This is High IQ Basketball with Brian Isley and Raymond Bird. We are in quarter number three. The score. Look at the score. You went crazy last quarter? I went crazy last. I was getting busy. <laughs> you did a lot of time, but I let you have, I, let, I try to make up for the time of position in the first quarter. <laughs> and I appreciate you. We're going to have to go 10 episodes straight and you let me run the ball before we. Yo, chill, man. I, listen, I'll be looking at the episode. I'm like, yeah, I got to chill a little bit. I, yo, I was looking at your job. <laughs> I when I brought that, yeah, so when I brought that to your attention, you used to move back and watch. I was looking, I was look like, at the yeah, tape. I got chill a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, hey man, we I all grow. As long as, long as you can hold yourself accountable, <laughs> we can move on from here. Uh, quarter number three, the La- the Lakers are planning to hang a special in season tournament championship banner at crypto.com arena uh it's getting a lot of backlash to the point where 
people are posting an old Kobe video. I was about to go right. I'm glad. I'm, I'm mad that you said that because I was going to use that. That was going to be a three pointer. You said that's going to be the three pointer. <laughs> oh, it's my three pointer. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kobe is saying we don't hang division banners. We don't hang conference banners. We only hang NBA title banners. And if you don't like it, if you don't, if you think it's bad sportsmanship, so <clears> what? <throat> Get over it. Uh, so, do you agree with Kobe being Bryant in that regard? I think if you remember when you initially said it to me, I was like, they're going to hang the banner. You thought it was a joke. Yeah, uh, listen, <laughs> man, um, for any organization, I've been like, yo, that's a bit much, like the end season tournament, and, and maybe they trying to get ahead of it. You know, like you said, I think you said to me on a previous episode where mm -hmm. you thought that that was going to be a bigger deal than it is today, later yeah. on down the road, where people are going to believe it's going to be something that you can really talk about in regards to your resume. Like, yo, yeah. we got X amount of in season tournaments, and I want, I want as many MVPs in the in season tournament. So maybe it's something that they're anticipating being bigger than what it is today, later on. Uh -huh. So they feel like it's something that should be hung. But right now, I look at it like that's a little crazy, like especially for the Lakers, a team like Kobe said. It's about when it rings out here. We don't count nothing else. We don't count. Last year, the Lakers went to the conference finals from, from the play-in, and people were disappointed. Like, yeah, I know y'all were under 500 the entire year. Y'all just on. Y'all couldn't get it done. Yeah. You know what I mean? So for a team that getting to a conference finals is not good enough, winning the in season. All you heard was the Lakers got swept. Right, not that they overcame X, Y, Z to get to this point. It was none of that. Y'all didn't get the chip, and and even if they had won the conference, fight, say they had beat the Nuggets and lost in the chip, they would have said the same thing. Like y'all couldn't get it done. So for organization, that's about getting it done. To where to hang a in season tournament banner is a little crazy to me. Were you shocked at the celebration? I told you they was going to celebrate. I mean, listen, man, I think Brown is at the point in his career where he's like, man, I'm enjoying everything. I don't care what none of y'all say. Mm -hmm. I've won championships. I've won championships. I've won MVPs. I've been at the top of the totem pole for X amount of times. I, I know what it is. I know what the ultimate prize, because Brian has been on the other end where he has, because of the media, I can't allow myself to celebrate. We win the conference tournament. I remember the time when he was with Miami, they won the conference tournament, and they won the conference championship game, Eastern Conference. He giving the trophy to somebody else, and he off in the back with the serious face on, like we got more work to do. Yeah, I dig it, and I think he's at the point now. I'm in year 21, man. I'm enjoying everything, and we we won a division. I'm gonna be happy. I won a division. I'm gonna be happy. We got home court. I'm gonna be happy. We won this in season. So we won five hundred thousand for my young boys. He, I think little, he was happier about that than anything. Right. Let me pop a little champagne. I don't care what y'all say. I they, think that's where the, he at right now. They had the goggles out, bro. They had the goggles. They had the champagne. I thought it was June. Listen, man. Listen, man. Be happy. He happy, man. Let that man be happy. I'm fine man. with it. A lot of pe most yeah. people are not. They like, yo, you, you tripping. Kobe rolling over in his grave right now. That's what <laughs> they were saying, man. Like, I would, I would never say it because I'm on the mindset of, these guys really don't know Kobe because had there been an in-season tournament when he Kobe was playing, he would have went nuts. He would have he would have been hell bent on being the first ever in-season tournament champion. Facts. You damn right. Kobe would have went crazy in the in-season tournament. Kobe would have went crazy in the bubble. Crazy. Had had Kobe had Kobe had there been a uh, play-in, and and remember when Kobe, the year Kobe towards Achilles. Say if that was a playing game. Yeah, they he had I think he had 30 that that game he tore his Achilles and they wind up beating the Warriors. He would have had 50. Listen, Kobe bubble, he went, you know, everybody was complaining about the mental health as I can't be home, I can't do this, blah, blah, blah. Kobe wouldn't have been poolside. Kobe would have been in the gym. Where he would took that as an opportunity. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna fine tune my game. Kobe would have. I'd have been working out every single day. I've been keeping my game. You'll be hearing stories of, yo, like we was at the pool having fun, and Kobe and I walk in the gym, and Kobe already he walking off with his towel over his neck because he had already worked out for two hours, three times. Like Kobe would have went crazy in the book because that was the purest 
level of basketball you're going to get in the NBA. You ain't got none of this outside stuff to do. You ain't got to travel. You get an opportunity to truly see who's who. Who's who. Because as far as we are go. balling. We balling. We ain't got to travel. Ain't nobody. It ain't because you tired, you lost. It ain't because you had to travel over yeah. here. It ain't because my fans were screaming louder today than, than yours. None like of that. This is, I'm better than you. Period. You know what I mean? That's all that was. So Kobe would have went, he'd have took that as a pure opportunity to go out there and kill everybody and show them I'm better than every last one of y'all. Agreed. And he would have took that same uh, mindset in the end season tournament as well. I, I agree. And I, I mean, I'm, I'm for Bron, I'm cool with, I'm not, I'm not cool with the banner being hung. It's the Lakers, man. Y'all, y'all above that. It's a different kind of banner. It's going to be off to the side and it's going to have like patches. Say, Listen, man, if we if we out here stopping the game. No, I don't we, think that's we, the case. If we before the game, we <laughs> fireworks is going off in Maybe, the arena because we got this. Listen, new, if they doing all that goofy, if we, that's have, if we weird. got pyro, that's weird time. It's the Lakers. If we got pyro, that's super it's weird. It's the time. Lakers, man. Hang that joint up. Let it be off in the corner and we just play our game. I'm gonna, cool. that's what you know what I mean? Do. That's what it should be. We ain't, that's what they're going to do. We ain't it's stopping gonna, the game. There's no rings. They already got medal. Nah, they stopping the game. They're going to have the jumble trying to the highlights of the tournament. All that. They're you know going to have Katie's, they're going to have Katie's snarl face up if there. They, if they do, I'm fine with it. I'm not fine with it. Because it's my Lakers and I'm happy we won. We won it. You're not a Lakers fan. You're a Bron fan. I'm happy so, for my, yo, for the late for y'all, it's beneath y'all. For Bron in year 22, 21, man, enjoy every moment. You ain't supposed to be having these moments. Said it's beneath. I don't give a damn. It's beneath. I don't care. The Lakers. LeBron, you're in year 21. You're not supposed to be having these moments. Enjoy every you're last not supposed bit to be of in the it. League. Not that's what I'm saying. I, that's my league. point. And, Bron, enjoy all of this. And, and, the, and the only other per people who... Had 21 season in the league in their 21st year. It was averaging seven points a game. And they couldn't enjoy... Robert Parrish couldn't enjoy nothing on the Bulls bench. It was winning championships. And he on the Bulls bench. You be quiet. You put your jersey on and... and At least Parrish was out winning the championships. Cups. Vince Carter was coming off the bench in Atlanta. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> and Atlanta wasn't winning nothing. That's what I mean. My point is, Bryant enjoyed... He, he deserves to enjoy every moment. Every moment. I, I think that's where he at. Like, it's been times in my career where I said, no fun. We got to win it all for me to, for it to be fun. And I think ultimately his goal is to win it all. I don't think yeah. that has changed. But he enjoying the ride. Because this, you don't know when. I think he at the point where he realized that I don't know when my this is going to be my last ride. I think he got another three, four years. I, like but I that's told, just I think me. Whenever... Las Vegas team is up for sale. That's when he walk away. <laughs> that's when it's on, that's when it's going to be a wrap. When if they say in two year Vegas is going, then the franchise is going to be ready to start. That's when Brian going to announce his retirement. And Shaq going to steal it from him. Shaq ain't got enough bread to steal it from Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Brian both gonna link up with Magic. Both of them need Magic can't own. Can't, what? I'm not no, saying, you, yeah, yeah, you yeah you're right. You're right. I don't think. I don't think Magic. Has any more uh, ownership stock in the, the Lakers? Lakers. He, sold, he sold all of it. I, yeah, so only only ownership stock he has in basketball, I believe, are the Sparks. I mean, so I mean, I'm, I'm not saying him and Magic together. I think him and mm -hmm. Magic. I'm gonna put my team together. I'm gonna what grab another billionaire. Yeah, I hope I, I hope Bron or Shaq the are the owners I want of Bron the to get it. Shaq, my guy, but I want Bron to have that job. And it's I another understand. notch under his belt to pass Tang Eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and you got Charlotte Hornets. <laughs> I got the Las Vegas, the Las Vegas Bulldogs, or whatever. The Las Vegas be. Bronze. He gonna call them <laughs> the Las Vegas Bronze. Yeah, I, I really do. I really hope they don't skip over because um, the the NBA does need. I, Jordan was the only black majority owner. At that time, I think we need multiple. But you, I, I don't think, I think they're going to, Brian going to have first dibs. I think it's going to be a bidding war. Mm -hmm. And long as Brian can, can put a team together that can match anything else out there, I think Brian is going to get it. You you heard Silver. 
hand it out to Jones, like, yeah, I know this ain't the prize you really want. Like, right. He, he know. I'm, Brian and talk, I'm pretty, Brian and put that in, in I want that, John. He know. And Silver know he want it. And I think that you going to have it. Long as the money makes it. We ain't taking no L's to look. You ain't getting no hometown discount. But long as you can put the bread up, you going you you gonna have first dibs. He should have first dibs. He's been the face of uh, of the league for so long, longer than anybody in the history of the league. I'm, I'm helping you get yo. I ain't like the play in, but the Lakers being in the play in made that shit legit, right? Mm -hmm. Us getting to the conference finals last year from the play in helped legitimize that, right? Mm -hmm. Something that you put in place. The uh, in season tournament, LeBron just made that shit legit mm -hmm. because he hooped. So I'm I'm helping I'm helping your cause, which leads people to believe that all this shit's rigged. <laughs> I heard that too yesterday, man. I I've been hearing it since since the Lakers won on Saturday night. Any, anything the Lakers, are, which I don't, I don't get, man. If y'all, if y'all think the NBA is, is rigged, then how come the NBA don't put the best matchups possible for the championship? Indiana, you, you think, you think Adam Silver Boston rigged? Boston and Lakers would have been fun. Boston Lakers, Milwaukee. Bucks Lakers, hell, Sixers Lakers would have been better than a, a, a better marquee matchup than Pacers Lakers. Y'all really think? The NBA is rigging for the Pacers to get to the end season tournament final and with the Lakers? Her Ernest Turner on a show with somebody's podcast, right? I forget which one it was. And he said uh Sixers was playing Boston mm -hmm. game seven, heat waiting. And he said, Yo, my OG. Oh, Evan, Evan Turner? Evan Turner, yeah. Okay. And my OG at the time, Elton Brand. Tells me he's like, yo, we gotta win by fifteen. If we gonna win this one, we gotta really go crazy on these boys because yeah. NBA don't want us there. They want Boston there. There's too I, much I bread to lose. Said, and he said, yo, it's you, memories and millions. Yeah, that's what you take away from this thing. I'm not going. I I, I will say I I feel like it's something there. No, it ain't. It's something there in all sports. I told I totally I totally disagree. Like if y'all listen, memories man, in millions. Say WWE, man. It's not. It's not scripted. It's not a predetermined. Sacramento, winner. LA. Not a pre. We're going into the fourth quarter. Oh, you don't want to talk about that? Because okay. we ain't got. No, we won't have any more Sacramento, time. Sacramento, LA. We won't have any more time. Okay. <laughs> and uh, we're going to talk about what is the fourth quarter. Oh, the Spurs suck. <laughs> Spurs are terrible. Uh, one half of the high IQ guys <laughs> said that the Spurs were going to make the playoffs and that Wimby was going to be an all-star. I did. It wasn't me. I did. <laughs> and my hands raised. It was me. The Spurs are terrible right now. And um, in, in the NFL, the Patriots are terrible too. And the Patriots are... I guess they agreed mutually to split ways with Bill Belichick. Or uh, Bill Belichick ain't coming back next year. Right. Should the Spurs do the same thing with Greg Popovich? Has his time ran out with the Spurs organization? I don't think you do it because you just gave him a contract extension. So I think it's a different scenario. I okay. Think Bill, I think I think the Patriots are actually doing him a favor. Like, Bill, you're going out crazy. I know this is your team, your organization, but you're going out crazy. If you have any intent on going out the way that someone of your caliber should go out, we're going to release you and allow you. I think Bill's, uh, he's not going to be done. He's not retiring. I think he's going to find he a does. better situation. He's going to find a better situation. I hope he does. And and and, and try to win there What's with the, the pieces already in place. He was trash before Tom. Nah, he made the playoffs. He made the playoffs with the Cleveland Browns before Tom. He refused to go to was it the Jets? I believe he refused to go. I think he had a deal in place to go to the Jets. Last second, changed his mind and went to the Pats. And he took over a Pats team that he turned into. You remember? You remember? I remember playing Tech Mobile, and the Pats were horrible on the game. They were the worst team on the game. The Patriots were. 
terrible. Remember we used to get the little football helmets out of the little machine out of uh, at Murphy's. Mm. <laughs> no, but you get the patch, John. You mad as you mad as hell. You spent your fifty cent on that, John. I remember Pats we had the NFL horrible. pencils and you didn't want the Patriots pencil. I remember Pats that. were horrible. And t- he turned that into the Lakers. He turned them into the Lakers of, of football. So, yeah, I mean, like, I, he, he, he did he, his job. We, we talked about David Stern being lucky Michael Jordan fell in his lap. <laughs> we talk about Adam Silver being lucky that LeBron is still here. Bill Belichick stumbled upon Tom Brady because uh, the the starting court Drew Bledsoe got hurt. All right, but taking on it was you luck. Say he got luck. It is luck. Anytime you draft the San Francisco drafting Purdy in the seventh round, is luck that he has turned out to be what he is. Correct. I agree with you, but Bill Belichick is in complete control of his entire organization from top to bottom. He drafts all his guys. There's not a GM making those decisions. Bill makes that decision. And Bill is very meticulous when he goes about doing such. So he is doing his homework on everything he that he brings into that building, right? You must fit what I got going on and you have to be able to conduct yourself a certain way. Yeah. He went and handpicked Tom Brady. Now, you cannot draft a guy that late and expect him to turn into the GOAT, right? Mm-hmm. So I ain't gonna say he necessarily anticipated that, Hell but no. it can't be. So it's a, I guess it's a, a semblance of luck there. But Bill drafted him. He did his homework and he brought the boy in, and then he had enough confidence to keep him on the roster. Like it's very easy for a guy you draft that late to get cut and not make the team. You're not yeah, guaranteed yeah, yeah. to be the backup quarterback because we draft you in the seventh. There's so many other options out there. He makes the roster because Bill keeps him. And then I have enough confidence to, you know, he gets hurt and you're in place. Mm-hmm. You're in position to take the job. And then once you take the job, I allow you to keep the job when Drew is healthy again. Right. So it's luck. But it, what, what do we always say, man? You got to put yourself in position to, to be, be lucky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bill put himself in position to be lucky. Those are his guys. He drafted Tom. No, not no GM. He drafted right. Tom. And uh, Greg Popovich drafted Tim, they they well, yeah, Tim Duncan. You know, you know, uh, yeah, no, no, no. What I'm, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, they they have they have similar parallels yeah. in in their in their careers, which is why I'm asking the question: Should the Spurs do the same thing that the Patriots are doing right now? You get one year. You get one more year, Pop. We suck again next year. We got to move on. Cause we can't waste Wimby. You can't waste Wimby. You got lucky. You got the first pick. You got him in place. That's being, yeah, exactly. that's what I mean by right. being lucky. They got the number one overall pick. Right. And we suck. And I don't think we expect it to suck the way that they, like, they're completely out of the mix. Not, not even in playing mix. They're completely out completely of it. Completely. You're in position to get the first pick again. So you get one more shot at this. If it doesn't work out, we move on. I think. I, I I agree with that. Um, I I hope he can go out on and he does. He got a, the contract extension, so he's probably gonna go out on his on his own terms. I like that coaches like Bill Belichick and Greg Popovich have become staples within those organizations. And the fact that Bill Belichick is gonna be gone now, kind of you know it. It, it lets me know that nothing lasts forever. I, I thought I would have thought it's no way they let Bill Belichick go. But then again, I'm like, yo, you tripping because they said they told Tom take it or leave it. Joe Montana got traded from Facts. San Francisco. Yeah, I, mean, I, I look at it from the perspective of you got to have you have an organization, right? You got to mm-hmm. have nuts. You gotta have nuts, and it's hard to fire a Bill Belichick. But if he was somebody else, you would fire him in a heartbeat. Like he's done a horrible. They've been trash since Tom left. Yeah, you, just like you were responsible for drafting Tom, you were responsible for drafting the quarterback you have right now with a first round pick, mm-hmm. and he hasn't delivered. And any other GM or any other coach who had that same responsibility and picked the guy, and it doesn't work out, they get fired. Why are the Spurs so bad? They started off the season well. I then they went they on like a 15, solid. 16 game losing streak. I thought they were going to be solid. I thought they had, because they were, they had not great players, but they had good pieces already around Wimby. I'm like, all right, Wimby can play. He's going to come in. He ain't got to be 
a superstar, but mm-hmm. he could be trending in that direction. I thought they would be in the mix, like I said, in that play-in situation, and they would grow from that and use that as momentum for next year. They've been horrible. He's been good, but they've been horrible. And it's like what sometimes the game passes you by. And I'm, hey, I'm not sure. Coaching. Right. I'm not sure. I'm not sure that's the case because Pop has been able to transition from the Spurs team that was scoring 80 points a game and it was defense first with two bigs to the teams with Manu to mm-hmm. the teams that he transitioned with Kawhi and had success with Kawhi. Mm-hmm. Post Kawhi has been no success. They've been terrible. You know why they were? It, it was easier for them to transition because there was always one or two players from the previous team on the transitional team. Right. That's not the case now. These are all young balls. Right. And but and it's like one of it's like things that those two organizations have in, in 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 common. Right. Bill Belichick has the Patriots way. The Spurs have the Spurs way. Yeah, facts. And so the Spurs way works with. The guys in place, right? The Manus, mm-hmm. the Tim Duncans. But these young kids, that's why I thought the Wimby thing made sense for them. Because mm-hmm. Wimby ain't one of these young kids from the United States that wouldn't find that to be fun. You know what I mean? Wimby just won a hoop, it looked like. And he comes from overseas. That would have been fine for him. For whatever reason, it still hasn't worked. So maybe it's time for them to make that transition because the game of basketball has changed, right? It's changed. How we play has changed. And maybe his the way he is going about things is not the way that leads to success anymore. Man, that's just, it, it, it's tough to see. You thought if anybody would be the, uh, be able to galvanize these young guys and make them a threat early, it would be Greg Popovich. That's what I thought. And hey, you convinced me. You convinced me on that. It's like, right. oh, it's pop. I, I like. I think we all walked into that draft and like, yo, this guy got lucky. Yeah, Wimby got lucky and got got ended up with the coach that's going to do, that's going to develop him. Like he can't. It's a win win for everybody, right? For mm-hmm. the league, for Wimby. Like we argue off the top. Like did the league uh, <laughs> was that put rigged? the ping pong balls <laughs> with the lottery in rigged. their favor to get Wimby, right? <laughs> like, because that's the perfect situation. And it's turned out not to necessarily be the case. But maybe we're premature. You know what I mean? Maybe they go through this year, they trash, and then next year they take off. You know what I mean? I don't know. It's hard to know, it's hard either, to go man. against Pop. It's tough to it is hard to go against Pop because Pop has that track record. He has that resume. He has that cachet. But the West is a beast, bro. Facts. It's tough to and not only is the West a, a, a beast, you got teams that used to be bottom feeders in the West now becoming top tier. Right, the Sacramento's and all that stuff. You know what's also crazy is like I'm thinking like. We give these coaches so much credit, right? Mm-hmm. Pop is at one point in, time, point in time. You say this is the best coach in basketball, yeah, hands down, and one of the top five ever. Mm-hmm. He don't look top five ish right now, do he? It he, looks bad. after Tim left, like he don't look top five just no more. Like after you left, you it's you, you're as good as the players you are coaching. When you have the, the that the talent. You coach well, right? And when you don't uh, have it, you look pedestrian. Here, he looks pedestrian yeah. as a coach. Here's what I'll say. I'll say it's unfair to judge a coach when they have a bad team. When 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 the coach is uh given or steps into a situation where they have an elite ball club, that's when we can judge you. But if you're a great coach, right? You you coach both, right? You have times when you're not overly talented and you have times when you are you had the talent and you you don't underachieve with that talent mm-hmm. right it, it's both of them right i, I don't, don't think ju- we walked like into this example, year saying san antonio was horrible yeah for example i don't i don't judge doc in in orlando i think he overachieved in orlando Facts. given his given the roster i judge doc in boston i judge doc with the clippers i judge doc with the sixers that's how i judge doc you had elite teams and a few a time, few times, more than once, you didn't get over the hump. And you had a 3-1 lead here, 3-1 lead there, and you dropped the ball. 
Orlando, I can't, I can't, I can't get on you about Orlando. You had Pat Garrity at center. He did a great job. I mean, I think he did a great job. At but is it is it Pat X Garrity and, and Daryl Armstrong? Is it X and O's? Because you would assume that Pop is an X and O's guy, right? Right. I don't think it's as simple as, all right, you got Pop and he gonna call the right. X. That's not what it is. It's just y'all suck, <laughs> or you are you a bad coach or do y'all suck? It's, you know what I mean? Or are you done? Is that whatever or is this he is? Done? Yeah. Right. Is because something... we saw we saw in Utah when with Darren Williams and Carlos Boozer and AK forty seven and all those guys, Jerry Sloan felt like he wasn't getting through to them. Where whatever whatever you're whatever you're preaching in a locker room, it's not transitioning over to this new era of basketball. Yeah. And it's, it's not you know what I mean? And it's time for us to move on. Jerry Stone's a great coach, and they got rid of him. Because right. the best player said, I don't like him. Yeah, true. That is the end of the fourth quarter, and Neil is tallying up the score. We'll check out the score after we um, delve into this OT topic. We got to go to OT. <laughs> we got to go to OT for real? We got to go to OT, B. Oh, it's 151, 150. Wow. I wasn't even trying, I swear. Well, I hit when I, I have yo, different... tell you what happened. It was at the buzzer. I had last possession point. I was on some uh I was on some Ori shit. I inbound the ball, caught that joint, knocked that <laughs> knock it down. <laughs> you it was it was 151, 148. Yeah, and I knocked until you made down. your last point. What's the boy who was saying? <laughs> what he was uh, saying? Mike Bring. Bang! <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I don't like that. <laughs> we are heading into OT. Our OT topic for this week, Complex has named their top sports media personalities. There, were, I believe it was 25 of them. We're not going to do the whole 25. Well, I guess we are. No, nah, that's random. That's random. <laughs> that's just, okay, okay, cool. But uh, I, we had Shannon, Uncle Shannon, Shannon Sharp, ranked number one as complex uh, top sports media personality. The top 10 rounds off like this. Uh, Shannon at number one. Stephen A at number two. Chuck third. Pat McAfee. Told you he was that guy. Uh, it's fourth. Shaq five. Cam and Mace as a duo is six. Gilbert Arenas was seven. J.J. Reddick was eighth. The playmaker, Michael Irvin, was nine. And Mina Kimes was 10. Skip Bayless, the OG of all this sports debate, television debate. I, I've been watching Skip Bayless for over 20 years when he first started on Cold Pizza with <laughs> Woody Page. And before that, he was on the Best Damn Sports Show with John Sally and all of them. He's the OG, the architect of this, of this whole sports debate game. And he is ranked number 11. The, his former co-host, who FS1 bought out of his contract, let him go, is now the number one face of sports media personalities. Raymond Bird, my friend, what is your take on that? I mean, <clears throat> it's not about, like we were just talking about X's and O's. It ain't about X's and O's. It ain't about, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's about the entertainment factor, right? Yeah. And... For Skip to be 11, I said a lot about, because everything he does is it's not about X's and O's no more. It's about entertainment. Like he says the most outlandish things sometimes to be entertaining. Mm -hmm. And for him to be 11 is a little crazy. You know what I mean? Because I think if you would have did it a year ago, he'd have been much higher on the list because he would have been next to Shannon and the show would have been a little bit more successful. Um, I'm happy for Aunt. To be number one after that that transition, like that transition, it goes either way, right? You yeah. leave his side, you leave Skip's side, who, like you said, he the OG. He the one, he put everybody on. You know what I mean? You, number two guy, Skip, who is uh, Stephen A, wow. he put Stephen A on. Wild, you know what I mean? Right? And now they both have surpassed him. And for Onk, I say it's, it's a big deal because... It could have went either way. You left it, Skip, and you could easily been off of this list, and no one wouldn't have been surprised, right? Right. But now you landed on your feet, and you end up being number one. So, you know, it's an interesting list, man. I think what it is showing that, like we said, new media, right? New media. New media is all over this thing, 
all over there. And you got a lot of people on here who are not experts in sports, right? Cam and Mays, I don't think anyone would consider them to be experts, right? No. But they're top 10 on this list. You got a lot of former players. In less than a year. They've been doing this for about nine months. Right. You got players who are on this list. Like, I think the avenue, the door has been knocked off the hinges in regards to the competition. It's, it, it's competition, right? I, I think it's more so, competition yeah. than it's ever been because you're not just competing with Skip Bayless and and and, and Stephen A. You, you, you're competing with the, Le- not saying so much LeBron, but you're competing with the players. Yeah. The players are, 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 are entering in this competition as uh, well. Paul George, Gilbert Arena, mm. uh, Darius Miles, all those guys, um, Matt Barnes, uh, Steven Jackson. Guys that, Pat McAfee, your guy, Pat right? McAfee, that's my guy. Usually this is reserved for the Gilbert Arenas, right? He was a superstar in the league, and now he comes in and he brings, you know, that that stardom that he had on the court over to, now I'm talking yeah, sports, right? Yeah. Pat McAfee was a punter. Nobody knows the punter. I didn't know Pat McAfee was in the league. <laughs> you know what I mean? And he's he's number four. He's a superstar. That tells you that the competition is crazy. Yeah, he's a superstar. Hey, you know what? You know what's great about Pat McAfee? Pat McAfee can he can talk about the the, the sports and all that. It's highly entertaining. It's hilarious. I showed you that clip with him and Adam Cole. Right. Uh, but he's also a WWE guy. He can go commentate. He can go uh, color commentate WrestleMania. He can wrestle in a match <laughs> at WrestleMania. You know, he could do it all. That guy, I, I think it was it was a it was dope to see Unk at number one. And I think Unk is hilarious. I think Unk is very knowledgeable. Not just it's crazy that Unk is a three time Super Bowl champion, Hall of Fame tight end, arguably the greatest tight end who ever lived. You can make that argument. But Unk is more known now for his basketball take than what he did on the football field. And here's the thing: it's like it's sometimes you see it right when you watch someone play. Like Draymond is currently playing, mm-hmm. but you see this is in his future, right? Yep. Shane, you ain't see that in Shane. Shane didn't play football. He was, you know what I mean? Like he was, he had a personality, mm-hmm. but you didn't, you didn't get that vibe that this was in his future, right? Right. Pat McAfee, I'm pretty. You're the punter. You ain't getting a lot of microphones in front of you after the game. My word. He's a superstar. Superstar. You know, he's gonna be known more for this than he was ever known for in regards to being a punter in football. You know what I mean? Like, so I think the competition. You don't know where it's coming from. You don't know where it's coming from. It could be the guy that's the last guy on the bench, but I was in I was in that room, so I got stories. I got stories, yeah. I got stories to tell. You know what I mean? Like it's not just the superstar that you got everybody. The competition for this thing to be on this list, it say a lot about you because it's a lot of competition. It's not just the obvious people no more. And you found a way to uh rise and, and, and be the cream of that crop. Cameron and Mace. Who would have thought? I'm pretty sure you know, they both play ball, right? But who would have thought two former basketball, two former high school, high school basketball, basketball players player, turned rappers, turned pastor, would <laughs> be on the top 10? You know, that's crazy. Yeah, it's wild. It's wild. It's even more wild to me because <clears throat> a year ago, they weren't even speaking. Hated each other. They had diss tracks about each other. They got diss tracks. I mean, diss track. Yo, <laughs> Cam celebrated running Mace out of uh, 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 out of uh, New York. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. But now we on it together, getting money, getting a lot of money. That's like they, yeah, I ran you out of Dodge, man. They, now they, here, now here we are. <laughs> <laughs> now here we are. Yeah, you know I mean? <laughs> <laughs> that is cap. That that did. Cam, Cam and Mace didn't speak for twenty years, man. They were friends for t- they went from best friends when they were broke without their deals. They both got their deals. They stopped speaking. They were beefing. And now they're on they they created it is what it is. And now they're getting million dollar deals. And they winning. Listen, like I said, like 
the competition is crazy because the path is all over the place. Mm -hmm. It's not your normal, oh, you got to go to college and for journalism. And once not you anymore. graduate, now you got to work for the newspaper. Now you got to cover a yeah. team. And then you, now you, now you work for it. You know what I mean? Like the path is all, you, you don't have to go through ESPN. You don't have to go through none of these FS1s. You could be right here. It, yeah. You could be right here. You could be at Neil's and, house. And, uh, you feel me? <laughs> and end up. <laughs> on this list like the path is cr the path is all over the place and it do you the think the old school guys uh, i don't think i think Stephen a has embraced it right. i don't think skip has embraced it as, as as much i don't even think he acknowledges it i i saw that nick wright and uh chris broussard who chris broussard should have been on the list wow chris chris is my guy too chris is high on my list of when i'm talking about i want to listen to sports i want to take that's one of the takes that I take. Like, but he it's wrong. about entertainment. It's not about the the it's not just about, you know, I mean, your, your, the information you're giving out. It's about the entertainment factor. And Chris is in a, he is giving a, a, a great take that's about the sport. Yeah, yeah. That's that's he's that's not true. He don't give you the theatrics. Do you think the old school guys are bitter? I know Stephen A is, and Stephen A has been on all these shows, and he showed love to everybody. He showed, but he was off top. He was. I'm not. I ain't gonna say he. He obviously he's not bitter. But his initial take was, yo, you guys is in the way. Word. You guys are in the way. Y'all need to chill. That was his initial take. Like the Paul Georges and all these. Y'all yeah, in the he way. Was at him. Yeah. And y'all bugging for being. Y'all already getting a bag. And now y'all getting in the way of and taking bags away from people like me. You know what I mean? Not necessarily me, because I'm Stephen A. I'm good. Yeah. But it's another dude, the, other, the Stephen A coming up, you you, you shutting the door on him. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's so doing, I think he doing all the necessary old school steps. Because those to, steps ain't relevant no more. Because the path is the path is crazy. People are changing the path. You could be a rap. Look, it's crazy right now. And I, is, I think is, they, it, is it crazy good or is it crazy? Is it concerning? You a comedian, right? So yes. I, let me ask you a question, right? Word. You 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 like the traditional path to being a successful comedian, right? I, I do. You like the you like the I'm going to the club, I'm putting this work in, and 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 that's the path to me getting to. I got Netflix specials and all that, becoming a superstar. I like that path, right? Mm -hmm. Similar to the what the Kevin Hart path, right? But the path has changed, right? You, you today is you pull your phone out and post a video on IG. The country you post Wayne, a video on the young fly path. And do you, as someone who appreciates the old school way mm -hmm. on how you do it, tried and true. How that's a good question for you. I respect. I respect it. I respect it, but I also know that is is it's not it's not me i may maybe i should try to embrace it the new way because the new way is here to stay like you said it ain't going nowhere maybe the old way is the old way for a reason maybe we should try it a, a, a different way because it, it, it proves to be successful if you do it correctly right so not bitter towards those guys at all what i what, what i will say about that in regards to the new style of building a, a brand comedically um a lot of these times a lot of times these dudes get success fast very fast and they get thrown on stage for an hour or an hour and 15 minutes and they don't have it so um with with the with the new media with the sports media you don't necessarily need that you just need to be entertaining we don't like we don't necessarily really need to have an in-depth uh intellectual sports take to be an entertaining sports personality facts on stage you gotta be funny right you gotta be funny for an hour they gave you an hour. You gotta be funny for an hour. Yeah, that that one minute clip that you posted on Instagram did a million views, and that's cool. But you gotta get on this stage that you just got booked for and be funny for an hour. Can you do that too? Right. It's a little bit different. So I'm not bitter. It's just that you know, so they they skip necessary steps. There's still necessary steps in being successful in comedy. Not so much in, in in sports media. It's a little bit different. I guess my take would, would just be, I think that 
it allows a lot of noise. And sometimes to take away from the quality shows, right? Okay. You got a lot of noise because you got Cam and Mace. I'm pretty sure you got Boo Boo and Doo Doo who got a <laughs> podcast and they rap too. You know what I mean? You feel what I'm saying? Like you got a lot. It's like with, you, you got social media. Everybody has a, a an opinion, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody is a, a sports analyst after the game because you got social media. Yep. And because you got, you know, the availability to have these podcasts out, you got a bunch of them. You got a bunch of these people. You got a bunch of these people who feel like they're podcasters and they're they're, they're they should be on this list. And you got you got a lot of noise, a lot of trash out there. Yeah. So I think that it's a lot of competition that maybe it shouldn't be as much competition because mm -hmm. you got to filter through so much. You got to filter through so much bullshit that maybe it's hard for you to find high IQ basketball where you really getting. A little both. You're getting, getting the knowledge and you getting the entertainment value. Word. Because you got to listen to Boo Boo and Doo Doo. You, you, you come across their John too. <laughs> listen, man. If there's somebody out there named Boo Boo and Doo Doo, we don't want no smoke, man. We don't want no problems. There's billions of people on this earth. I'm pretty sure there's a podcast <laughs> out there called Boo Boo and Doo Doo. <laughs> Basketball takes. Right. I'm just saying. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> one one no count. We'll play all two on two. Facts. Uh, you gotta give me. You gotta give me like. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta give, give me at some least a month. To get right. You gotta give me a month, man. I ain't play ball a bit. Oh, I, yo, you might need to give me six months, man. Every time I walk, feel like my left Achilles about to snap. <laughs> I'm I'm good, man. I done hung spinach, the sneaks up. Man, some spinach. Some spinach to help my Achilles. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'll buy some when I go home. This has been episode nine of High IQ Basketball with Brian Isley and Raymond Bird. For Raymond Bird, for Super Producer Neil, I am Brian Isley, and we will catch you guys next time. If you're going to a baby shower and you need a gift, I have the perfect solution for you. Go to Honey Bee Cakes on Macari. Honey Bee Cakes specializes in affordable diaper cakes. They make the perfect gift for the new addition to the fam. Search Honey Bee Cakes on Macari today. Hey, everybody. This is Brian Isley, comedian extraordinaire, uh, asking you guys to download Logo, the Isley album, and Uno, the One Take album. Uh, I have three albums. They're all on Spotify. They're all on iTunes. They're all on Tidal. Uh, streaming well right now, but I need more support. I need you guys to go and download these albums, man. Download Logo, Laugh or Get Offended. Download the Isley album and download Uno, the One Take album. And they are available where you stream all your music. They're hilarious because I made them. So download these albums today and get your laugh on. Yeah, I can put that together. I cool. actually might. They're video. Uh, they're just audio. Uh, the albums. The albums yeah. No, yeah. Hey everybody, how you doing? This is comedian Neil Wood and Adam Nutter. Like, we can't do it like that. You have nope. to sound like a human being. This cut. That's insane. Because I'm, I'm realizing how little you're talking. Adam Nutter. I could just take. If you just want me to. Honestly, you know what we need to do is just get, you just need to get that clean. Adam Nutter. And then I'll just pop it in wherever I need to, bud. Adam Nutter. Let's do that. Come listen to the Cult of Us podcast. That's our promo. Adam Nutter. A Drop Tent Media Network podcast. Go to droptent.com or search Cult of Us podcast on your favorite podcast platform. Aha. Uh -huh. I'm gonna have to tie my Nikes for this one. I'm gonna go for like a like a quadruple double. Ha -ha. You plan the game to win, and greatness come from within. The only time you lose is the only never begin. Gotta be like the shoes and just do it. The clock is winding down, so now shoot it. If fortune favors the bold, that's why I keep on just winning. If timing is just the essence, then I'ma keep on just spending. I'm worth a couple of bucks. Shout out to Under the Kumpa. Dropping in Bebo facts that's seeping into your glue buds. Advising like Tony Kuko. Drew getting into it mucho. Directing all these plays like my name was Tony Russo. Balling, that's how we do so. I'm going in for the win. Penetrate the lane.
game like be way back in 2010 I'm stomping straight in my Tims The basics just like I'm Tim I'm dunking on you haters A poster is where you live It's magic all in my wrist That Curry we going swish It's showtime like the 80s basketball is where we live I'm highly gifted and skilled I'm going in for the kill The game is on the line Remember Ayo hey, what's the deal Pass it to Brian Osley I bet he probably surprised me High IQ basketball is just showing It's not a hobby You playing the game to win Come from within. The only time you lose, the only never begin. Gotta be like the shoes and just do it. The clock is winding down, so now shoot it. We playing the game to win, and greatness come from within. The only time you lose, the only never begin. Gotta be like the shoes and just do it. The clock is winding down. So... This has been a Drop Tent Media production.